In the previous lecture, we had seen the set of real numbers. So, we defined real numbers um, as a set with binary operations of addition and multiplication with certain properties. And uh, we also said that we can represent uh, the real numbers on the line uh, when we try to put uh, integers, rational numbers on the line, each one of them goes and occupies a unique position on the line. Still some points uh, on the line are left out which are not represented by any rational number. These are the points, for example, the square root 2, square root 3 uh, and such numbers are not represented uh, which are on the line, but they are not represented by uh, some rational number. They are not. So, there are positions on the horizontal line where all the rational set and still gaps are left out. So, these gaps are filled by uh, defining new numbers and adding them to the bag of uh, rational numbers and constructing a new one. So, this construction process is quite long and uh, requires more mathematical maturity. So, we are not going to deal with it. So, uh, as and when required for the geometric purposes uh, for understanding uh, some properties of real numbers, we will treat that all the points on the line are <coughs> each point represents an, uh, a real number and every real number is uh, represented by a point in the line. So, algebraically uh, it is a set with certain properties, geometrically it is the points on the line. So, these are the two views we will keep of uh, the real numbers uh, for our further discussions. The geometric viewpoint will be uh, used as and when we want to exhibit some uh, properties of the real numbers. So, that is why the points on the horizontal line are called the uh, real line. So, that that set of all points on the line uh, are called the real numbers and the line is called the real number line. So, uh, now I am going to describe a, a very important concept uh, for the real numbers. Namely, if the points are on the line and so if 0 is a point, we know the 0 is somewhere and if I take any point x on the real number, it will be somewhere on x on the left or on the right. So, there is a notion of distance physically. I can measure geometrically measure the distance uh, between 0 and the point x. It may be on the left or on the right. So, how does one uh, uh, make it more precise mathematically? Uh, what is this algebraically? What is this number? So, this is called the absolute value of a real number. So, for every real number x, we associate a non negative number, and this non negative number is denoted by 2 bars and x it is called the absolute value of x or called mod x modulus of x and it is defined as follows. So, modulus of x is defined to be x itself if x is non negative number, if x is bigger than or equal to 0 and it is written as minus x if x is less than 0. So, note for a non negative uh, number x mod x absolute value of x is x itself. Whereas, if it is negative, then absolute value is minus x. So, absolute value of the number is always a non-negative quantity, is a non-negative real number. So, mod x is equal to x if it is non-negative and is minus f x if x is less than 0. So, let us, uh, this is called the absolute value. So, geometrically if this is 0 and this is the point x, we want to measure this distance from 0 to x. So, that is the mod x because if x is negative then this distance because distance is always measured as a positive quantity. So, this is mod x and if x is on the positive side on the right side then mod x is x itself. Okay. So, this mod x is x itself if x is positive and if x is negative this distance is nothing but minus of x. So, algebraically it is defined as mod x absolute value of x is equal x if x is bigger than 0 and minus x if x is less than 0. So, this is called the absolute value of uh, a real number uh, and geometrically it signifies the distance between 0 and x. And using this one can easily define what is the distance between two points x and y. 
So, it is nothing but the absolute value of the number x minus y that gives us the notion of distance between x and y. So, we define the distance between two real numbers x and y. We are not saying x is bigger than y or y is bigger than x. Take any two real numbers x and y, look at x minus y that will be a number, take its absolute value that will be a non negative quantity and that is called the distance between x and y. So, uh, distance between two points x and y is the absolute value of the number x minus y. This notion of absolute value, so this is what we have indicated here, it has some important properties. So, let us uh, look at those properties, we will not uh, prove those properties, but they are quite reasonably obvious. Namely, absolute value of a real number is always bigger than or equal to 0, that is quite clear by definition and it is equal to 0 if and only if x is equal to 0. That means, if x is 0, its distance from 0 is 0 and if the distance of a point from x is 0, then the point must be 0 itself. So, this is the put as x is bigger than or equal to 0 and in always and it is 0 if and only if only in the case only and only in the case that x is equal to 0. The second property says absolute value of x is same as absolute value of minus x. That is quite clear from our um, definition because mod of x is a non negative number. So, mod of x is same as mod of minus x. Uh, how absolute value behaves with respect to multiplication? It says if you take product of two numbers x and y and take its absolute value that is same as the product of the absolute values. So, uh, how we are describing here in this property, how does absolute value behave with respect to multiplication? It says the product of the uh, absolute value of the product is same as product of the absolute values. And here is uh, an obvious third property, namely for a number x is always between minus of mod x and plus of mod x, right. Mod x is a non negative quantity and x is equal to mod x if it is positive and if it is negative, this number is minus. So, it is minus minus that is x. So, it is always between minus x and x, one of them will be uh, true. And uh, here is, this, uh, if mod x is less than y, it says this property mod x is less than distance of y okay, is bigger than mod x if and only if either the point y is on the right side of x or minus y is on the left side of it. We do not know, right. So, x may be positive, x may be negative. Okay. So, it says if y is bigger than mod x, then if this can happen if and only if x is bigger than minus y and x is less than or equal to y. And here is the last property which is uh, quite uh, important which relates absolute value with addition. It says that the absolute value of the sum of two numbers is less than or equal to the sum of the absolute values. In multiplication it was equal, the absolute value of the product was equal to product of the absolute values this is not in general true for addition. What is true is we can only say that the x plus y absolute value is less than or equal to absolute value of x plus absolute value of y. Okay. This is normally called Trangen inequality. Uh, it uh, relates the property of distances in a triangle the sum of two sides is bigger than uh, the third side. But at present we should uh, we'll lo only look at because points are on the real line, we will say that the absolute value of the sum is less than or equal to sum of the absolute values that is called triangle inequality. These properties of absolute value we one can prove, uh, but we will not be uh, discussing the proofs here. Uh, some of you who are interested in knowing the proofs of these things can pick up uh, uh, a book on advanced calculus if you like or uh, if you uh, like um, under the NPTEL I had developed a web course on calculus. It is available online on the NPTEL site. Uh, look for 
uh, web course on calculus and in the first uh, chapter these properties are proved. So, uh, if you like to read more about uh, calculus, you can always refer to the web course on calculus um, on the NPTEL website. So, use internet fruitfully and look for that course and read it if you find it interesting. So, these are the properties of absolute value that we will be uh, using in, a, in our course. So, let me repeat once again for every uh, real number x, we can associate a uh, quantity called mod x that is the distance geometrically it is the distance of the point x from the number line. This distance is always bigger than or equal to 0, it is 0 if and only if x is 0. So, distance of x is same as distance of minus x okay? and the absolute value of the product is product of the absolute values and here are the inequalities that the number x is always bigger than or equal to minus mod x and less than or equal to mod x because depending on whether x is positive or negative it will be equal. And a mod x is less than y if and only if y is bigger than x and x is bigger than minus y. Here is the property which relates addition with triangle inequality property which relates addition uh, with this property. Namely, uh, the sum uh, absolute value of the sum is less than or equal to sum of the absolute values. Here is a slightly uh, technical uh, stating uh, inequality which you may or may not uh, be able to visualize, but anyway uh, this is uh, quite simple to prove and we may not be requiring much uh, use of it, having much use of it. It says if you take a point, take a real number x and take a real number y, look at their absolute values. So, absolute value of x and absolute value of y. These are again points on the number line. The distance between mod x and mod y is less than or equal to the distance between x and y. So, this is another property of the absolute value. See, um, one thing I should point out at some point in higher mathematics, the geometric intuition uh, is not possible and it is only that is why uh, one has to at some point leave the geometric intuition to do the abstract mathematics. So, here probably you may not be able to visualize what is this property geometrically. So, these are the properties of absolute value that we will be using in the course of our in our course. Right. So, let us go over a bit further. So, till now we looked at uh, what is a real number, we looked at representing numbers on the line and we defined the notion of absolute value of real number. Next what we are going to do is we are going to look at some important uh, special subsets of real numbers. Um, which will play uh, a role in our uh, future part of the course. So, uh, let us start describing these special subsets. Given a set, given real numbers A and B, let us assume A is less than B, we write with a this bracket A comma B. So, we write bracket A comma B to be the set so, this is a notation for a set. What is this set? It is all real numbers which are between A and B. So, all real numbers x which are strictly bigger than A and strictly less than A. So, this set will denote it by round bracket A comma B round bracket closed. Similarly, the square bracket A comma B will denote all real numbers x belonging to R such that x is bigger than or equal to A, but less than or equal to B. So, here in the in this x was strictly bigger than A and strictly less than B, here x can be is actually equal to A also and equal to B also. So, here you can think of uh, that A and B are not part of this set the first one while A and B are part of this set. So, uh, 
you can quite easily uh, compare the two. This first set is a subset of A B. In fact, a proper subset because the point A and B belong to this set, but they do not belong to this one. Okay? So, similarly there are some other uh, sets, let us describe them. Uh, I am taking a circular bracket A comma B with a square bracket on the right side. This means I am looking at that set of all points x real number which are bigger than A and less than or equal to B. And when I put square bracket on the left and circular bracket on the right, that means I am looking at points x bigger than or equal to A and x less than B. Okay. So, it should be clear uh, some pattern is emerging when it is a circular mar 1, circular bracket means there is a strict inequality, when it is a square bracket that is a less than or equal to. So, here is the next one which is slightly uh, different from these two. We write a comma this, this is a symbol which is read as infinity. So, a plus infinity circular bracket a plus infinity means I am looking at all the real numbers which are bigger than a x bigger than a. And if I put a square bracket on the left that means I am also including the point a in the set. So, I am looking at the set x bigger than or equal to a. So, that is square a comma plus infinity. So, this is a symbol plus infinity. Okay. So, this so keep in mind this symbol it is like a flat 8, 8 is normally written as this if you make it horizontal this looks like uh, 8. So, this is plus infinity read as so a comma plus infinity oh, square uh, circular bracket, circular bracket means I am looking at all numbers x bigger than a. And if I put a square thing here that means I am looking at all numbers bigger than or equal to. So, keep that pattern in mind when bigger than or equal to that means a square bracket. And similarly, minus infinity to a. So, if I put a minus sign before the symbol infinity, this is read as minus infinity and square a that means I am looking at all numbers which are uh, less than or equal to a. So, from a onwards including a and if I take put minus infinity comma a circular bracket that is all numbers x which are strictly less than a. So, these are special type of sets and these are uh, called intervals. All these are called the all these are subsets of real line and they are called intervals. Just keep in mind whenever is a circular thing coming there is a strict inequality whenever there is a less than or equal to there is a square thing coming. And also keep in mind this plus infinity and minus infinity are just symbols, they are not numbers. So, all these are subsets of the real line. So, when I am not including A, so this is a circular one and including B, these are called left open right close intervals. So, intervals of this type are called left open the left point A is not included and B is included. So, left open right closed. So, similarly this type of intervals in a square bracket on the left. So, this is left closed right open intervals. These intervals A comma B with circular brackets and minus infinity comma A, A comma plus infinity these are all <coughs> these type of intervals are called open intervals. Okay. And uh, when there is a square bracket with infinities coming these are called closed intervals. Okay. So, these are names given to special type of subsets of the real line, but all along please keep in mind that minus infinity and plus infinity are just symbols they are not numbers. Do not confuse them that plus infinity is a number 
which is bigger than or equal to uh, any real number a. It is not a number, it is just a symbol indicating shortening is a shorthand to describe the intervals. Okay? So, let me just once again go back. So, these are the type of special subsets. So, this is the open interval a b, this is a closed interval a b, this is a left open right closed interval, this is left closed right open interval, this is you can call this as a unbounded interval or a infinite interval which is it is an open interval okay, open on the left of course and this is a interval which is closed on the right this is an interval which is closed on the left. So, this is a closed interval, this is a closed interval, this is an open interval and this also is an open interval. So, these are special type of intervals, special subsets of real line which we will be using okay. and keeping in mind plus infinity, minus infinity are not uh, numbers, they are just symbols to signify. So, if you look at geometrically, the open interval a b we can represent as circular bracket here circular bracket here. So, all the points in between this represents the interval a comma b and similarly, if I put a square bracket here and a square bracket here, then the points inside included a and included b are this is the geometric representation of the closed interval a b. This is the open interval a b, these all points on this segment excluding A, excluding B and this is all points on the segment with A and B included that represents the closed interval. These representations will be useful uh, in proving some properties of real numbers. right? So, they guide us to write uh, the analytical proofs later on. Okay. So, keep this in mind. There are some special type of uh, intervals which will be requiring. So, consider an open interval of the following type a, a is a real number, delta a is a, a real number bigger than 0. So, look at a minus delta and a plus delta. So, geometrically you are looking at this is a point a and you are going a distance delta on the left, you will get the point a minus delta. Go to the right we will get the point a plus delta. So, look at the open interval with this is called the left end point. So, left end point is a minus delta, the right end point is a plus delta. So, all points in this segment excluding a minus delta and a plus delta. This is a interval, this is an open interval, its length is 2 delta on delta on this side and delta on this side this is called a delta neighborhood of the point A. So, such type of intervals are normally called delta neighborhood of the point A. So, we will be using this uh, in our future discussions. So, keep with this in mind. Okay. So, geometrically we are saying uh, this geometric uh, thing is written algebraically as an set theory. So, interval A minus delta to a plus delta excluding a and excluding b. Uh, um, here is a typo here, it should be this should be strictly bigger, this should be strictly bigger. Okay. So, because we are taking open, right. So, this is a typo here. So, please keep in mind that this should be strictly less and this should be strictly less. Okay. So, now, um, we have described real numbers, we have described um, the notion of absolute value. So, keep in mind the absolute value allows you to discuss the notion of closeness of points on the line because it measures the distance. So, if you want to say two points are close, you will say that the absolute if a two points are x and y are close to each other, you will say that the distance between them is small. That means, you will say the absolute value of x minus y is small. So, absolute value allows you to describe closeness of points on the line that is the important thing. So, now we are going to look at uh, a new concept called uh, sequences of real numbers. So, let us look at uh, a problem. A manufacturer uh, 
produces 1200 shares per week. After week 1, he decides to increase the production and he has now two choices. One, he can increase the output by 80 shares more per week, that is one possibility. And the second is he can increase the output by 5 percent per week. Okay. So, he has two options available. One, he can increase the output by 80 shares per week. Right? Every week he can go on increasing 80 shares or he can also have the option probably he has two factories. In another factory, he can increase the output by 5 percent per week. Okay. So, these are the two possible choices he has. So, what is what we want to discuss? One would like to know the output in each choice for the first 10 weeks. In the coming 10 weeks, what will be the output of uh, that, uh, uh, what will be the output uh, of the number of shares being produced. Also probably one would like to find out the number of days for each uh, option when the production ex exceeds 800 shares. So, let us uh, try to uh, understand each option one by one. To solve the problem, let us calculate the output every day. Let A 1 denote the output for week 1. Let A 2 denote the output for week 2 and so on. Right? So, A 1 is the output. So, A 1 will be equal to 1200 that is given to us. Now, if he goes for the option A, that means what? He is able to increase the production by 80 units more. That means, A 2 will be 1200 plus 80. Right? And what will be A 3? A 3 will be equal to from the second week of 1200 plus 80, another 80 will be added on. So, after the third week, it will be the first week plus 2 times 80 will be added. So, if we go on doing it at, at the 10th week, 1200 is the first one, 9 times 80 more shares would be uh, added, production will go by up by that many units. So, total units will become 1920. So, what we have done is we have generated a observation. This is the this is the first one production on the first week. This is the production on the second week if the choice is 80 per week added, third week and so on. So, uh, this data that we have generated is that of the production at every week. So, we have generated a sequence of numbers which describes the production of first week, second week, third week and so on. So, the point is we have generated a sequence of observations. So, we will continue uh, in the next part of the lecture this a bit more.